There's an organization out there that can help U.S. citizens and permanent residents get accepted to top MBA programs, fund their MBA, and even provide career support post-MBA, as long as the applicants support that organization's mission. Let's learn all about it from the Consortium for Graduate Study and Management's Director of Recruiting. Welcome to Admission Straight Talk, the podcast dedicated to graduate admissions and helping you approach the application process thoughtfully and successfully. Your host is Accepted's founder and world-renowned admissions guru, Linda Abraham. At Accepted, our mission is to get you to that unforgettable moment when you read your acceptance email and shout, yes, I'm in, confident you'll be attending the perfect program to help you launch the career of your dreams. Welcome to the 532nd episode of Admission Straight Talk. Thanks for joining me. Sometimes I'm asked, is the MBA worth it? And my answer is, it depends on your individual circumstances, but I've got good news. We've developed a tool that will help you evaluate whether an MBA is worth it for you and your individual circumstances and by how much. Just go to accepted.com slash MBA ROI and check how much you're likely to benefit or not from earning an MBA. And using it won't set you back even one cent. It's free. The URL again is accepted.com slash MBA ROI. I'm delighted for the first time in Admission Straight Talk to talk with Bianca Keys, Director of Recruiting at the Consortium for Graduate Study of Management. Bianca earned her bachelor's degree from Lindenwood University and her master's in business management and leadership from Webster University. She has worked in enrollment management, DEI training, and admissions in different capacities since 2008. She became CGSM's Director of Recruiting in September 2022. Bianca, welcome to Admission Straight Talk. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm delighted to do so. Now, let's start with something really, really basic. What (laughs) is the consortium? All right. So the consortium, we are pretty much an alliance of top graduate business programs and also top corporate partners. And we're supported by alumni and students. We were founded in 1966 by Washington University's Professor Sterling Shane. And his one driven mission was actually inspired by his him noticing a lack of African-American men in leadership in American corporations. So with the partnerships of some corporate partners and some founding schools, they were able to pretty much create this alliance to give African-American men the business skills uh, to be able to secure positions in American corporations. So now we've grown. (laughs) And I assume it's no longer limited to the African-American men. It's now African-American men and women, right? Yes, men and women. And and our target pops are African-American men, Native American and Hispanic American, but our applications are open to all. Got it. Got it. How does one become a CGSM member? In order to become a member, you would have to, of course, apply. And uh, three of our requirements are that you are, you must be a U.S. citizen or U.S. permanent resident of any race or ethnicity. You must demonstrate a commitment to our consortium's mission and hold a four-year uh, bachelor's degree from an accredited college or university in the U.S. or equivalent. So to be approved for the consortium membership, an applicant must demonstrate the commitment through their resume, our essay, and their letter of recommendation. Let me just, I, I, I have in front of me your mission, so I'm just going to read it off. The mission of the Consortium for Graduate Study and Management, an alliance of leading American business schools and some of our country's top corporations, is to enhance diversity in business education and leadership by helping to reduce the serious underrepresentation of African Americans, Hispanic Americans, and Native Americans in both the member schools' enrollments and the ranks of management. So, again, there's no racial requirement in terms of membership, as long as you support and identify with and support and have supported that, that mission in the past. Yeah. All right. So one of CGSM's benefits is the ability to apply through CGSM mm-hmm. and pay one application fee. And I think it goes to, to a maximum of six schools, correct? There's no max anymore. There's no max anymore. Ooh. So two things, two updates, we've removed rankings. 
So there are no rankings and we you can apply to as many member schools as you would like. So it, from one to two schools is $150 up to six schools, which is $300, but each additional program is $25. Ooh. Yeah, so they can apply. And so in the past with our ranking system, you know, the top ranking school, they were the only school that was able to offer a fellowship opportunity. And now if you apply to all six schools or more, they have the opportunity to offer you, they each have an opportunity to offer you a fellowship. And we empower the student to be able to make the better choice of what school best fits them. Wow. That's a big change. Mm -hmm. When did this change take place? Like this last year? Last, mm -hmm, this last application. Last cycle. Should have interviewed you then. No, yeah. I'm teasing. <laughs> That's great news. I somehow missed that announcement. Okay, yeah. good to know. Good to know. So there's no more ranking and there's no more maximum and, and multiple schools could offer a fellowship. Yes. Is it possible to, now you, you apply for membership at the same time that you submit your application, correct? Yes. So it's, it's possible. It's a one-stop deal, one application. So mm -hmm. it is possible to use the CGSM application process and ultimately not be approved for CGSM membership. Is that correct? Yes, that is possible. Uh, but the application is still considered an application. So you won't get rejected from the member school just because you didn't get membership. They still go through their standard process of admissions. And a lot of times they'll offer you other fellowship opportunities or scholarship opportunities that they may have available at the schools. Got it. Mm -hmm. And the schools don't even see your decision in terms of CGSM membership. They don't see the membership essay, correct? The, the membership application essay. They right? don't see any of the membership application essay or letter of recommendation. All they see is the decision once we've made it. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Now, I saw on your website that Stanford partnered with CGSM last year and be became the 22nd school to mm -hmm. become a partner school. Have any other schools partners since then? Yes, I'm excited to say that. Okay. Well, you North got lots of news today. Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> Northwestern Kellogg School of Management has, they are our newest, our 23rd school, which we are so excited to have them. They will begin uh, July 1st, actually, and they will be on our application this upcoming cycle. And this upcoming cycle is for students fall 2024, that will begin fall 2024. Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right. No, that makes sense. That makes, that is exciting news. Wow. So you have, uh, yeah, that's fantastic news. Okay, great. Um, like I said, I should, I should interview you more frequently. <laughs> what is the benefit of applying through CGSM as opposed to just using the school's portal? Portals, so I should say. We, one, save you money. You know, right. an average application for any grad program can be up to about $300 for one application, right. where six applications is $300 applying through us. So it's definitely a win for the students, whether they get membership or not, you know, they, it, it's saving the money and they are allowed to go by our application deadlines as well. So if, you know, maybe Columbia or one of the schools, maybe their application deadline may be September 15th, they still would uh, recognize the application on our deadline, which our round one is October 15th. Right, right. That is a significant, and I believe it's also easier to apply. Isn't aren't there fewer essays required, or is it pretty much the same at this point? Right. So it is the the core essay, which asks the applicants to discuss their MBA goals, mm -hmm. and then there's a, a second core essay that the applicants are able to detail any additional information that they may want to add that they weren't able to explain in the application. Right. And mm -hmm. is there typically a, like a supplemental per school essay or do they, do the schools ask for their own essays in addition to the consortium essay? Or? Sometimes, sometimes they ask for their own supplementals that are added in addition. We are going through that process of application updates as we speak. <laughs> okay. Okay. But it's not all schools that do that. No, 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 no. Okay. Usually it's those uh, they usually the student has the mission essay and then the two GMAT format 
essays. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. Are you worried about CGSM's applicants using chat GPT and preparing their essays? Oh, the chat GPT. (laughs) You got it. Well, I'm asking everybody this question. And, and, and that's a good question. So with it being such a newer phenomenon right now, I just want applicants and students to be mindful that there are advantages and disadvantages to using ChatGBT because what we're looking for is consistency in their demonstrated commitment to the mission. And I doubt it if they'll be able to convey that in an interview <laughs> based off of a, a chat GPT essay. So a lot of the admissions advisors and committees, they're looking for authenticity. They're looking for you know unique perspectives and their uh, applicants ability to be able to express themselves. So I don't know if they can, you know, it, it probably is a good tool to help guide them in, you know, forming their essay, but I don't think it should be something that, you know, can express exactly your commitment. Right, right, for sure. Mm-hmm. I've played with it a little bit and and sometimes there are outright errors in it. It's wrong. Right, right. And other times it's just very generic and it has to be generic. You're not going yeah. to get, you know, a lot of authenticity, but it does sometimes help. Yeah, yeah. But to rely on it blindly, I think it's a big mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially if you don't check. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Attention to detail. <laughs> yeah, it counts. It counts. Mm-hmm. Are there other elements to the CGSM application? I mean, we discussed, you know, you pay a fee, you have mm-hmm. the core essays, you might have supplemental essays. Are there short answer essays or anything like that? Or is it so pretty peaceful. straightforward? Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. If the school has any changes or supplements to, you know, each essay, that may be the different shift or change, but pretty much transcripts, resume, we always advise students to make sure that your experience, if you're a part of organizations like Forte or MLT, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, making sure Teach for America, making sure that that's actually on your resume. That definitely helps. The Your test scores, GRE, GMAT, or executive assessment, letters of recommendation, and mm-hmm. one for the mission, and then there are two for the schools. Okay. Yes. And making sure you get the right recommender. <laughs> what makes I- the right recommender? Someone who can explicitly, especially for the consortium mission letter of recommendation, somebody who can explicitly pretty much show your demonstrated commitment to our mission and they know, you know, about that, you know. They've observed it. Yeah, they've observed it and they can actually speak to it. And they're not saying, you know, well, I don't know about their demonstrated commitment, but um, Jane is a great person and we love her personality. She's very professional. It's like, what? <laughs> That's not the question. Right, right. So definitely communicating with your recommender about expectations. And with us, it doesn't have to be like your supervisor with the consortium mission re- letter of recommendation. It can be as long as it's not a family member. <laughs> it could be anyone who can speak to it. <laughs> All right. So you've somehow supported that mission. Makes sense. Yeah. What are the non admissions benefits of being a CGSM member or fellow? And what is the difference between being a CGSM member and fellow? So there's really two qu- questions there. Why don't we start with the non admissions benefits of men- membership? And then we'll get to the difference between being a member and a fellow. So the non-admission benefits are pretty much the early access to corporate partners. A lot of our students, we just had OP, our orientation program this past June, and it was amazing. It was amazing. I know you're Um, working very hard on it. Yeah. Oh, man. (laughs) It was definitely a job, but it worth it. And just to see all of the students that we've worked with from the beginning up until that point, 
from all their stress points, their pain points to see them, they made it. And they're at the orientation program. So them having early access to our corporate partners, they also have access to our system that is, uh, we have a platform that is called Hello Fellow that allows them to join different groups that are industry groups and our corporate partners have access to them as well. And they're able to apply to positions that are open to those corporate partners. Also at our um, orientation program, we had a corporate open house that allowed, that's not like your traditional job fair. You know, a lot of these, all of these corporate partners actually already had our students' resumes. They already had a student lookbook. They've already seen the students and they already know the students prior to them even coming to the expo. So they definitely have a great advantage by being um, a, a consortium fellow. And then the camaraderie, the support that they have with each other is there's nothing like it. I love how each campus had, they call themselves CFAM. (laughs) Yes, yes, each campus, each consortium cohort on each campus, they're so close. They, uh, a lot of our alumni mentioned that the connection, that's like a trending thing with us here at the consortium is connection, being able to connect students with not only each other, but also with our our corporate partners and with our top MBA programs. So they have lifelong connections with all three of those uh, different entities and they enjoy being able to talk with someone who understands them, someone who, you know, can't maybe going through the same even issues at their jobs or anything like that and that connection. And if You know, if there's a job loss or anything like that, we do provide the support to help those uh, students to be able to reconnect with corporate partners and um, find another opportunity. Okay. So just to clarify, the orientation program is open to all consortium members, not just fellows, correct? So consortium fellows, you're applying for membership, but the Mm -hmm. membership allows you to become a consortium fellow. So whether you received a fellowship or not, you are considered a consortium fellow. Oh, got it. Okay. Okay. I understand now. All right. I was a little messed up with that one. All right. So you're a consortium fellow, whether you get a scholarship or not. Right. Got it. And all the, all, all fellows slash members can go to the orientation program. How long is the orientation program? So it's a four day conference and it consists of a lot of hands-on career development. Uh, We have diversity theater, which is amazing. Um, A lot of our corporate partners, they have private interviews with a lot of the students. So a big portion of our students leave with uh, internships or career opportunities. For for next year, for next summer? Yes. For this summer, for next summer? Yes, for this upcoming year. For the summer 2024, let's say. Yes. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And what is diversity theater? Oh my goodness, diversity theater. Um, this was actually my first year to experience it. Hearing it from other coworkers and staff was not at the same as experiencing and seeing those difficult conversations displayed on stage. So there's actors that are on stage and they they may act out a scene where it's some coworkers that may deal with microaggressions or or different challenges that you may face at work and how to address that and just having those conversations amongst your peers and it really uh, was eye opening for not only the students but for staff for a lot of our corporate partners and um, admissions representatives as well so it was pretty amazing and we have it annually as well yeah. okay mm-hmm. And it seems like the orientation program is very much career oriented. Is there any prep for the actual study of the MBA or is is that assumed that the schools will handle that? So the schools, the admissions representatives and career services representatives are present. So they do have an advising session that they get to kind of 
work with them and meet with them one-on-one for prep with the uh, corporate partners, but also any questions that they have about the upcoming program that they're about to start in the fall. They, they have all of that one-on-one time, a lot more one-on-one time than they would normally get um, during the school year. Got it. Sounds like a very busy four days. Yeah, very full. <laughs> yeah, it is very full. <laughs> okay. How does CGSM help its fellows in career placement, both during and after the MBA? So during the MBA, again, we have the Hello Fellow and our annual program, our annual orientation program and career forum. Um, Like I mentioned before, they have the opportunity to interact with the corporate partners. The corporate partners get to review their resumes and their uh, backgrounds early on before even meeting them face-to-face. Our alumni network Our um, Hello Fellow system allows them to, again, engage with these corporate partners. And then our student and alumni relations department, they are amazing with connecting with the students. Um, They engage with student liaisons as well and providing that support that they may need throughout the year. And if there's a student, like we just had tech layoffs recently and our alumni development department, they were able to help and assist with uh, re-engaging with those students or those alumni to be able to help them to get placed in other career opportunities. So so let's say this this past a few weeks ago, you had the OP. It was mostly geared towards people starting the MBA in 2023, but it also had people who started the MBA in 2022. Is that correct? We had some second year, like if something happened last year, I know dealing with the pandemic sure. and some other issues, some students were not able to attend last year. And so they were given the opportunity to attend this year. But it's usually just for the people about to start the MBA, the OP. Right. It's usually okay. first year students. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. What do you see coming down the pike for the consortium? Oh my goodness. I continued growth, continued engagement with a lot of the students. We're working on increasing our exposure and um, engaging. This year, we shared a lot of our OP activities on our social media and got a lot of good feedback and engagement. So definitely, I think we have a good momentum right now to be able to get all of the good things that we do at the consortium out to the public and to the world. (laughs) For sure. For sure. What advice would you give to someone planning to apply via the consortium in this, the 2023, 2024 application cycle? I know your application opens on August 15th. This show should air about a month before then. The early application deadline, as you said, is October 15th and the traditional or the final due date is January 5th. So We are now roughly six months from the final due date, three months from the first deadline. What would you advise someone to do? Definitely begin your MBA journey. And beginning your MBA journey does not start with the application. It starts with the preparation. (laughs) Yes, that's right. (laughs) Definitely starts with the preparation. So researching a lot of the schools that you're interested in, finding out if you're interested in the consortium, finding out what that consortium culture looks like on each campus to see what best fits you. Also looking into preparation for GRE, GMAT, or uh, the executive assessment and finding out what the class profiles are for each um, school that you're interested in so you can have a good idea of where you stand. And don't rush your application. Don't rush it. (laughs) I always have some overzealous students <laughs> that want to, I'm getting it in for round one. Wait a minute. Make sure that you're submitting the strongest application and that this is the right time for you to start a program. There's no rush. There's no rush. There's no rush. Make sure you have the strongest application. Utilize all resources that you need to support you through your application process. We always advise students to attend our events 
We have a member school webinars that are, we actually have one coming up on July 10th, uh, which will um, have Washington University, University of Rochester Simon and UCLA Anderson. And they will be talking about their MBA programs, but also talking about their consortium cohorts on their campus as well. We also have our MBA application preparation seminars, which is MAPS, um, which will be in person this year. So we will be in New York, Philadelphia, Chicago, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Houston, and D.C. Wow. Finally got getting around. (laughs) Yeah, you're getting around. Yeah. One question I wanted to ask occurred to me as you were talking just now. So not all consortium schools require a test score. Does the consortium require a test score, even if the school does not? So we don't, for membership, we don't require a test score. But if you are applying and they offer a test waiver, we would need to have that test waiver submitted or um, you would need to submit that in the application. And then um, we just confirm it with the member school, whether that test waiver was actually approved. approved. Yeah. And then if it wasn't approved, then they would have to submit a test score. Are any of the programs or any of the partner schools entirely test optional? Or do you know? Top of your head. I I wasn't sure Um, as I was thinking about it. I don't think so. I think, well, it depends on the the school and what policies they have in place this upcoming school year. I think most of them are, are, have like a test waiver option. Yeah. And I also would have to go through each one. Yeah. I always advise students to talk with them early about it because last year um, I ran into the issue of students who just missed it. It was like they just missed the test waiver window. So definitely talk with your uh, school of interest to find out when that test waiver time frame is and get that in, if that's right. an option for you. Wonderful advice, even if you're not applying through the CGSM, by the way. Right. Absolutely. Um, yeah, for sure. What would you have liked me to ask you? Hmm, these were all great questions. What would you like to share that I haven't asked? I would like to share just my, as in my position as director of recruiting, what my passion and desire and vision is for the consortium moving forward is to be able to expand our exposure to those who definitely need the opportunity to be able to, yeah, expand our exposure to those areas. Because sometimes we are kind of in this collegiate bubble. Uh (laughs) Academia. Yeah, absolutely. And to be able to, we do so many great things and, and and just being able to see just the energy that I get from the students, just being around them and just the, the positive, just nature of it all, being able to give that to others who don't know about the consortium. So that's that's my mission and goal is to to increase exposure and to really share about the great things we're doing here at the consortium. Well, today in this podcast, you did it. <laughs> you did it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Linda. You're very welcome. <laughs> Bianca, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Where can listeners and potential applicants learn more about CGSM? They can check us online at www.cgsm.org or on our LinkedIn page. They can check us at the Consortium for Graduate Study and Management, CGSM, and our Instagram page and on Twitter. Sounds good. Thank you very much. We're going to include links in the show notes, except.com slash 532 to the consortium, as well as to several interviews I've had with consortium school admissions deans. So check it all out. And you can do that at except.com slash 532. Quick reminder, check out Accepted's free MBA calculator at except.com slash MBA ROI. Listener, thank you too for joining Bianca Keys and me for our 532nd episode. If you find the show worthwhile, please tell your friends who are applying to graduate school about the podcast. Let them also learn from future shows, be they with admissions directors, 
recruiting directors, professors, current students, test prep pros, or alumni doing great things. Thanks again for coming. This is Admission Straight Talk produced by Accepted, and I'm your host, Linda Abraham. I'll talk to you again next week. 